Drake May is one of two highly touted quarterback prospects to the point where they are being debated as the top two picks. Most mock drafts see Caleb Williams going first, then Drake May following short after. But I have something to say. That quo should be flipped, aka Drake May should be the one going first. With his dominating all-around skill set, the answer is set in my mind, and Drake May should develop into a superstar in the league. I'm Chase Keller, and let's dive into this Drake May scouting report. Before we take a look at the film, I want to go over the overview of Drake May. A redshirt sophomore out of North Carolina, he has been highly scouted since his high school days of being a five-star prospect. He originally committed to Alabama before flipping to UNC. Just imagine how crazy that would have been. He redshirted to start his career before going on a rampage in his redshirt freshman year, including winning ACC Offensive Player of the Year, ACC Rookie of the Year, and ACC Player of the Year. This included a 66.2% completion percentage, 4,321 passing yards, 38 touchdowns, and 7 picks. Along with that, he ran 184 times for 698 yards and 7 touchdowns on the ground. His redshirt sophomore year was not as impressive as he put together a 63.3% completion percentage, 3,608 passing yards, 24 touchdowns, and 9 picks. 112 rushes, 449 yards, and 9 touchdowns on the ground. He comes into the draft with a prototypical frame at 6'4", 230 pounds, which makes a positive in itself. He also has a rumored 40 time of 4.6, which is in the 90th percentile of all NFL quarterbacks. We'll discuss that later. So, that's an overview of Drake May for you. Let's get into the film. Let's begin with what May does well, and I think that starts with his accuracy. He's got a lot of traits related to accuracy that I want to dive into, so let's start with the fact that he can hit all three levels of the field at efficient rates. He has the flexibility to find different angles and reads. He has the flexibility to find different angles and reads to hit everyone everywhere, whether it be a curl route five yards deep, an out route 15 yards deep, or a go route 50 yards deep. Yeah, I mean 50 yards, but that's a section of its own. Lots of throws I noticed came on fade routes, especially in this 2022 Notre Dame game where he found NFL receiver Josh Downs on this fade route for a touchdown. So, he has the three levels, but he also has the adjusting ability to accurately make throws off balance on his back foot and on the run. On tape, he faced pressure many times and was forced to either rush a throw or scramble out to extend the play. This play was one of my favorites when watching the seven games of film as he ran out of the pocket due to pressure and launched one 45 yards downfield on the run with great accuracy. As for a separate example, he made this jump pass throw against Clemson in 2022, an impressive throw to make while being under pressure and being hit. His accuracy also shows in his ability to hit tight gaps both in stride and still in zone. He sometimes pushes these throws a little too far, but noting that he has the ability to squeeze between these gaps is beautiful. This example against Appalachian State shows his ability to anticipate the off coverage and deliver a beautiful pass to the back of the end zone, but sadly the receiver was unable to get a foot down in bounds. Honestly, his receivers failed to haul in so many passes that I saw on film in 2023, but I guess that's what losing Josh Downs and Antoine Green does to a man. Anywho, May's accuracy is among the best in this 2024 draft class, and with his ability to efficiently hit receivers in many different situations, teams are going to note that as his biggest positive in his skill set. The arm talent continues with his arm strength being so amazing. Several times May was able to rocket a ball 60 yards downfield, and this is where I have to discuss something. These up in the air prospects in the past that show both elite arm strength and elite mobility were questionable raw prospects coming in, like Josh Allen and Anthony Richardson. But it gets me thinking, May is not a questionable raw prospect, so is this kid actually the real deal? Anyways, he's able to maintain his great accuracy while bringing in elite arm strength as shown on this deep beauty against Notre Dame in 2022. Now here's where I wish I had more. I will say there was a lack of over the shoulder throws on tape and he's better at throwing contested catch fade routes or diving balls that only the receiver can catch. 
All in all, it's very clear that May has top tier arm strength and mixing it in with his accuracy, his arm talent is going to be sought out by teams as it may just be the best in this draft class. What separates May from Williams as my QB1 is the poise and pocket presence that May brings to the table. While it can be inconsistent at times, there's no doubt that at its highest, it's an elite trait to May's game. The ability to know when to escape the pocket is huge to have in a modern day NFL, unless you are a pocket passer, which doesn't really exist anymore. Let me begin with this play. Patience behind the line, then when nobody is open, he looks for the hole in the line, runs through it, and uses his acceleration to run past the spy and easily get the first down. This is just where it starts. Example after example after example on tape just shows his top-notch poise and pocket presence. But that true separating factor is the pocket presence he has. We've seen it in a couple examples already, but some plays show the true dominance of May's escapability. The 2022 Oregon ACC Championship game was my second favorite one to watch and my favorite in 2022, and this play epitomizes that. Poised and patient, before seeing the slightest hole and pushing through it to get a few yards and avoid a sack. You can see Jeffrey Bassa, the Oregon inside linebacker, push May out, and that is exactly when he leaves. Waits till he has to and does it at the perfect time. This is what May does so much better than Williams. He utilizes his mobility to make great pocket presence and escapability, which teams will cite as deal breaking for the NFL. Let's stay on that topic. Athleticism and mobility is another huge positivity of May's game. He's got several aspects of athleticism that makes him both a close field and open field threat, but I think his elusiveness is what makes me most attached to him as a prospect. On this play, he was able to find the hole, then change his direction to hit it efficiently, then change his direction again to avoid a head-on tackle and get extra yardage by getting tripped up instead. So there's the elusiveness, but on top of that, there's the very nice speed, the great acceleration, and the short area burst. As I said earlier, he's running around a 4-6-40 yard dash which would be in the 90th percentile of all NFL quarterbacks. I also noted that he has running back like vision in the close field, as some of the runs he makes are just so damn impressive, I'm stuck wondering if it's a tall, lean running back or just Drake May doing his thing. Here's another great May escape for you to watch, as he's able to get inside the hole and use his great QB speed to gain 26 yards. Overall, his athleticism and mobility is top notch for this class, and when you combine this with all of his great passing traits and escapability already discussed, he's a phenomenal prospect. But wait, I have one more positive thing to discuss here. Let's take his accuracy, his arm strength, his poise, his pocket presence, his athleticism, and let's combine that with the fact that he may be the best first read diagnoser in this entire class. He's fantastic at reading defense, and a lot of his completions come from first reads in the short and medium game. Some of it could be manipulated by the play calling, but I would like to think that it's his elite ability to read a defense. This play, for example, he uses his off-balance throwing ability and reads to find the hole in the zone and deliver a pass to his wideout while experiencing pressure and getting hit. I will be honest. I almost pulled the trigger on calling May the next Trubisky after watching his 2022 film, but in 2023, he developed his progressions at high rates and is much better at finding his second and third read. Because of that, I now have no issues with his progressions. So that will round out the positive section today. Here are all of May's positives. Prototypical top pick skill set, undoubtable arm strength, top tier pocket presence in three man and four man rushes accurate at all three levels of the field, very elusive and speedy when scrambling, running back like Vision, possibly the best first read player in this QB class. Overall processing took heavy leaps from 2022 to 2023, can squeeze passes through tight gaps, can throw accurately both on the run and off balance, very elusive escapes on tape, and fade route throws are on point. Now, there are a couple negatives to Drake May's game. If a prospect came perfect, I would be a bit concerned and it would probably be too good to be true. 
These two negatives are the most concerning, and it starts with May's inability to diagnose blitzes pre-snap at an efficient level. I do see some points where he diagnoses it and throws the rock quick, but I see too many taken sacks and contact throws because he fails to recognize the 5 plus man blitz coming his way. He improved slightly on this in 2023, but it was pretty bad in 2022 to the point where he took 40 sacks behind a good offensive line. Even in my favorite game, he struggled to diagnose this. In this 5-man blitz with a 6 blitzer delayed, he kept his read the entire time without noticing the blitz's pressure, and by the time his pass was going off, he fell under pressure and went down. This part of the tape is going to be huge for the NFL. As in college, defenses aren't as flexible. Blitz rates will skyrocket with May behind the center, so I'm going to bring up this concern that I had for CJ Stroud. He may not perform unless he has a top tier O-line. Obviously that hasn't been the case for Stroud, but I still have to diagnose it as a prospect. Another concern that I have for Drake May is how he often forces passes to his first read. I discussed how he has elite first read tendencies and he's fantastic at diagnosing coverage, but especially in 2022, he often forced passes out to his first reads. As an example, I took this from Notre Dame, where he kept his first read and trusted his receiver to make the play in triple coverage. There were so many examples of this in 2022, and with his processing improving in 2023, somehow this did not improve significantly with it. I really don't have anything else to say. If he continues to force these passes, they're going to turn into interceptions, just like they did for his 2023 season. That rounds out the negative section in this video. Before we depart, here are all of Drake May's negatives. Struggles to diagnose blitzes pre-snap and is often sacked on those plays. Did not take the next step in 2023 as he may struggle to develop in the NFL. Still forced passes to his first read in 2023. Ball security needs to improve, knows when to leave the pocket but needs to learn when to go down outside of the pocket, some lapses in judgment, and I just wanted to see more over the shoulder throws on film. So that's what I saw in Drake May's film. What do you guys think of Drake May? Let me know in the comments section below. Well, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I got a lot of scouting reports coming out here in the next few months. If you're not subscribed, you're missing out. Once again, I'm Chase Keller from Chase Keller Journalism, and thank you guys so much for choosing this channel as your source of sports coverage. I'll see you guys in the next video.